I'm Nelson Starr, Buffalo rock and roll rock on tour and food fanatic. Follow me backstage and into the kitchen to learn the secrets behind our very own Buffalo food scene. This is your all access pass. Happy Valentine's Day. In this episode of All Access Pass, we'll be overindulging on everyone's favorite love potion, chocolate. The oldest surviving chocolate confectionery in Buffalo, Fowler's is an institution when it comes to sponge candy and other chocolate treats. Founded in 1910, Fowler's story actually starts at Buffalo's 1901 Pan American Exposition where Joseph A. Fowler hawked candies to fairgoers outside the main gate. Today, Fowler's is owned and operated by Randy and Ted Marks. But these days, they're selling over 200,000 pounds of chocolate a year. Most importantly, they're still carrying on the same tried and true methods of making quality chocolate as they did a century ago. It sure smells good in here, even better than that coffee shop in Amsterdam. The smell of chocolate, intoxicating. Ted's a nice guy, but I keep wondering where the Oompa Loompas are. So these are uh, cherry cordials. They get double coated in chocolate in an effort to make sure they don't leak until you bite into it. Almost everything we make that goes into a box of chocolate gets made here on the Enrober. The chocolate flows out through that slot, which then creates the curtain that the piece of candy goes through. Is there a way I could like stick my head under there and just like, look at that. Every kid at, at school wishes they could turn on the faucet and get that, huh? I love this. What's your name? Deborah. Deborah here. Her, her job right now is simply to take her finger and leave a stringing marker, a fancy mark, at the top of these chocolates. That's a cool job. We don't put as much product on the belt as we can because uh, it's kind of hard for Pat and Flo here to keep up if we were really to fly the stuff down here. Girls, take a cue from I Love Lucy. You know, if, if it gets too fast, just start eating them. Yeah. Ted, uh, what does that machine over there do? Did I forget to mention that I'm a chocolate klepto? A giant piece of sponge candy. Just pour some chocolate over this, Ted, and you got, you know. This stuff on the outside is, is almost as hard as this table. We cut off that exterior layer, exposing the soft, crunchy, uh, good stuff kinda, on yeah. the inside. Yeah. And, um, and this piece uh, fell off. Yeah, that's the hard stuff, see? That, mm. that. Um, do Salino and Barnes handle dental injury cases? Is this one batch? This is one batch. Okay. We'll cook it up on these copper kettles over here, then pour it into the form, into these forms, let it sit in the form overnight, and then break it out of the form and cut it. Pretty cool, huh? It's an amazing process. Fowler's finely tuned chocolate factory is operating at peak today. Even after I've pilfered at least a pound of chocolates off the assembly line, they've managed to meet their production quota. Bang it on, get your chocolate on. Buffalo is a great place to have a quality candy company. I mean, one of the things that sort of is left from Buffalo's glory days is that there is a surprising, I kind of wish this wasn't true, but a surprising number of manufacturing candy makers still in Buffalo. Uh -huh. um, the downside is there's a lot of competition. On the good side, though, is that people have an appreciation for higher quality candy. There are some Buffalo favorites that, you know, are kind of unique to Buffalo. Sponge candy is probably the most famous thing. You hit the nail on the head. Sponge candy is our best selling product. Other candy makers know how to make it, but in Buffalo, people love their sponge candy. They're critical about it. They yeah. want it done right, and so they expect it really a high, a high bar for it. Exactly, and uh, that's where we come in, you know? I mean, yes. um, no one makes sponge candy better than we do, and it, it, the consumers agree because we sell an awful lot of it. That's great. Ted, look, I got to pick up some chocolate for the missus. It's Valentine's Day, so uh, I guess I'll just get a box of sponge candy. What could be better, right? Certainly. And if you love your wife, you need the one pound box, not the half pound, oh. the one pound box. All right, let's do it. Um, How much do I owe you? Uh, $18.99, unless okay. you got a chocolate lover's card, in which case they're uh, $16.99. Oh, well. We can sign you up.
1935 is your change. Thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. Enjoy. Thank you. All right. So I think Fowler's is a classic. But man, I'm getting a little OD'd on Coco. I could really use a drink. Hey, here's a bar. A pretty cool bar, in fact. Chocolate bar. Just give me your, like, signature martini. I hear chicks really dig this place. I must be here too early. Looks like I'll be alone again on V-Day. Now I know I need a tall, stiff drink. This is your signature martini? That is our signature martini. It's a mega chocolatini. Thanks, dude. Just what I need, more chocolate. I don't know if I can do this, but let's give it a try. I like the straw. It's good. It's really good. That's really, really tasty. Uh, it's got uh, vodka. It's got Godiva dark liqueur, and then it's got our homemade chocolate ganache in it, which is what really makes it, gives it that chocolate kick. It really is pretty chocolatey. It's really, it's extending my chocolate um, bender. <laughs> I, I think this would be tough for two people to get down, quite honestly. Yeah. Save off imminent heart palpitations, I better consider some more healthy options. I know, how about some entirely responsible fruit? Ah, fruit. Fruit and a little chocolate for you. Oh, more chocolate? This is like the best assortment of just plain wrong things to dip into velvety chocolate ever. Too bad I'm near a coronary. Yeah, fresh like, pineapples like in pineapple. there. I'm a big pineapple. Fan. Strawberries go gray with chocolate, of course. Okay. I have to admit, this is cleansing my palate pretty admirably. You have some caramelized bananas over here. Caramelized bananas. I like that. Treatment to a banana. Okay, so maybe a bit more chocolate is the way to go. The hair of the dog, as they say. I promised chocolate bar owners Bill and Carolyn Panzica that I'd try their famous molten lava chocolate cake. Look at how that breaks apart. And in the center liquid is a gooey liquid chocolate gold. And it's warm. Mm. Mm. I can smell it. It's so aromatic. Mm. I love gooey, luscious chocolate sin on a plate. Like Pavlov's dog, my chocoholic instinct kicks in and I wolf it down. The whole time, I have this towering martini glaring at me, daring me to finish it. Somehow, I muster the courage to finish this monster off. We thought this was appropriate for you today. Nobody knows the truffles he's seen. I appreciate that, thank you very much. Hey, I just feasted on enough chocolate to make a Roman cry uncle, and all I get is this lousy t-shirt? It's the thought that counts. All kidding aside, chocolate bar rocks. After a well-deserved nap and a Keith Richards worthy detox, I'm heading over to a new place in town. All I can say is, look out. Ciao, chocolate. If you want to know what the future of chocolate is in Buffalo, or the world for that matter, look no further than Chow. Chow Chocolat is redefining just how Buffalonians come to think of chocolate. I adore our traditional favorites, but this is something new, even challenging, in the world of chocolate. Owners Scott and Jacqueline Weiss are part of a burgeoning chocolate renaissance that is connecting the dots between chocolate's Mesoamerican birth, its classical French upbringing, and its current infatuation with contemporary culinary trends such as sustainability, fair trade, and provocative juxtapositions of ingredients. Take us through the bonbons at your bonbon bar here. Okay. Uh, these both are milk chocolate. These are just kisses in celebration of Valentine's Day, so they're more festive. These are the cognac truffles, dark chocolate ganache, raspberry, these are the mojitos, lime and mint. Uh, these are a hazelnut gianduya, which is a creamy hazelnut buttery center. Uh, the jasmine tea, salted caramels, 
peanut butter and jelly. Our peanut butter flies, which has a peanut uh, creamy center, peanut butter. Grand Marnier, or orange. Habanero and mango. Coconut and curry. And passion fruit. Do you like hot chili peppers or coconut curries? I do. But have you ever tasted them in your chocolate? It's got actually chili peppers in it. It's got hot, hot chilies. Hot habaneros. It goes back to when the Mayans had chocolate. They added cayenne pepper and they added chili powder and, and cinnamon and, so really, and spiced it a little bit. So in a sense, it's gone full circle. So the, what's the most cutting edge now is the earliest renditions of the, the sort of chocolate porridge that the uh, exactly. natives were making. Okay. Exactly. And not surprisingly, these exotic ingredients really do work as long as you have good quality chocolate to pair them with. Okay, let's give it a shot. Let's see if curry and chocolate works together. It's actually kind of buttery and nutty at the same time. I suppose it's the seeds from, that are ground to make the curry powder. Right. And the, um, the, the ganache at the center. There's an underlying flavor that goes with the curry. Mm -hmm. Can you tell what it is? Coconut? Exactly. Just a, just a little bit, but it's, it's, a sub, just a, it's subtle. Just a compliment. The curry's a little bit more out front, but the dark chocolate is the um, most out front. So there's definitely a staging of the flavors and an evolution of the taste. Like a layer. Part of the beauty of a box of chow chocolate is that each and every morsel has been hand dipped and or brought to life by Scott or Jacqueline. They create and inspect each and every piece, and believe me, you're in good hands. Apart from the adventurous menu, Chow is a pretty cool place. Tons of natural light, French pressed coffee, sipping chocolate, which is the best hot chocolate you've never tasted. Wow. All lend to the sophisticated yet friendly ambiance of the place. Even if you don't dig curry in your ganache, Chow has plenty of more, so to speak, kid-friendly offerings. Astonishing. You won't feel like an idiot, I promise. Because the only idiot around here is me. Especially when dancing is taking place, and I'm doing anything more than watching. How do we even do this part? Sure, I can jiggle my rump on a rock stage, but don't ask me to do anything beyond the spastic. I'd just be glad if I don't fall over. It's good so far. Okay, so more like again. that, oh, okay. Another big one, really big. The other foot. Oh, the other foot left? Oh, oh. <laughs> I'll do karaoke, but dancing is just, like not at my pay grade. Yet for all my trials and tribulations, I was able to at least stand some ground with chocolate. We danced, we sucked face. She was my Valentine this year. She's an interesting chick. So sweet, yet a bit naughty too. Mm. It's just the perfect blend of, of hot and, and sweet. Hey, thank you so much, it was awesome. All right, take care guys.